Hello everybody, my name is Hello. Welcome to this video series where we are solving code personal problems in Python. We are doing the A to OJ ladder and in this episode we are doing problem 141A which is called Amusing Joke. This is a simple problem. Uh, maybe a bit of concept is required in case you are very new to this whole competitive programming thing. So without any further ado, let's see how we can solve this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and read this question before we attempt to solve it. The New Year holidays are over. Santa Claus and his colleagues can take a rest and have guests at last. So when two New Year and Christmas men meet, their assistants cut out of cardboard the letters from the guest's name and the host's name in honor of this event. Then they hung the letters above the main trends. One night when everybody went to bed, someone took all the letters of our characters' names. Then he may have shuffled the letters and put them in one pile in front of the door. The next morning, it was impossible to find the culprit who had made the disorder. Okay, we couldn't find who did it. But everybody wondered whether it is possible to restore the names of the hosts and his guests from the letters lying at the door. Okay, this is something that is very important whether it is possible to restore the names of the host and his guests from the letters lying at the door. That is, we need to verify that there are no extra letters and that there, nobody will need to cut more letters. Help the New Year and Christmas men and their friend to cope up with this problem. You are given both inscriptions that are hung over the friend door the previous night and a pile of letters that was found at the friend door during the next morning. We need to then uh, print yes without the quote if uh, the letters in the pile could be permitted to make the names of the new year and the christmas men otherwise print no okay if you're able to understand this question great if not let me just tell you how this works first you are given three lines in input okay so these first two lines these represent the names of the new year uh, and the christmas men okay so the first line contains the guest's name and the second line contains the name of the resident host. So this is the host and this is the guest. What they are saying is, was some random guy, what he did, he took these two names, he mixed them up, all the letters of the names and then threw it in the front door. So the next day when you are looking at all of these uh, letters, you find something like this. This Santa, Moro, Dero, something like that, okay, for these two particular names. We need to find out whether all these jumbled words can make these two, these two names. And how do you do that? Well, uh, to put it more simply, let's say this Santa Claus is our name number one and Dead Moros is name number two. And in the morning, we have this particular file which says Santa Moros Dead Claus. Right, something like this. We need to find out if we can make these two names from here. That is, there should not be any spillover also. This should not, this third line should not contain less characters or more characters than what is required to make these two names. In case they do, they obviously the answer is no. But if they don't, they contain exactly the number of same characters to make both of these. Then we can go ahead and say, yes, this is the same uh, letters which is just scrambled okay how do you check that see santa and santa is same here so s and s we can cut a and a we can cut n and n cut t and t we can cut a and a again we can cut moros m and this m we can cut o and this o r and this r o and this sorry o and this o z and this z okay and d e d so d followed by e d followed by e d this also we can cut then we have C, here also we have C, L, we have a L here, A, we have a A here, U, we have a U here, S, we have a S. So you can see this particular line here has exactly exhausted every single letter in the first two lines with nothing extra or nothingness. So the answer for this particular case is yes. Let's take a case where the answer is no also so that you guys can understand a bit better. Let me just zoom here so that we can cut stuff here itself instead of putting it into a new line. So right so this is line number three the joel napoil all of that so j is here o is here u is here l is here do we have an n yes there's an n over here do we have an a there's an a over here p there's a p over here a another a over here o there's an o over here 
Is there an I? Yes, there is an I. Is there an L? There is an L as well. Is there an E? Yes, there is an E. Is there another L? Hmm. Okay. So there is no other L. That is something that we can mark and keep for now. So this L right here is missing. Then we can move on with the rest. Is there a U? Obviously, there is a U. Is there a P? Yes, there is a P. Is there another U? Yes, there is another U. Is there a K? There is a K. Is there a K? Yes. And is there an I? Yeah. So you can see there is a missing P and extra L. So we have two things that are missing here. In either case, the answer will obviously be no, but we have both. So definitely the answer is no only. And that is why this answer is no. This cannot make these two. Okay, exactly. And that's how that works. Even for example, let's say this has another P also, still the answer will be no only because this has an extra L. So our job is to find out, given this three lines, if this third line can make the first two lines exhaustively. Okay. In order to do that, we're going to be using this concept in Python called frequency distribution. I, we talked about this already in a different context, in a different video, but this distribution slash histogram, okay? Uh, this is what we're going to be finding out and using this, we're going to make comparisons. So let us take one case. Let's call this Santa Claus, okay? We need to find out how the letters in this particular word are uh, distributed using Python. And how this will look like is you need the output to look something like this. You need to say the number of S in this particular case is 1, 2. The number of A is mm, 1, 2, 3. Correct. And the number of N is 1. The number of T is 1. And A is already there. C is 1. L is 1. And U is 1. S is already we have noted it down. So how do we get something like this using Python? Okay. And uh, how we do that is we just iterate through every single letter here. And we say, we create an empty dictionary. We say, if this particular letter is not in this dictionary already, initialize that letter to be one, the count of that letter to be one. Okay. In case it already exists, then increase the count of this letter by one. So that will be something like S is equal to one initially. Then will be A is equal to 1, and then N will be equal to 1, then T will be equal to 1. But then we when you go back to this A, A already exists. So we increase this A counter by 1 to make A 2. C does not exist, so C will be 1. Uh, L does not exist, L will be 1. A already exists, so we can change this now from 2 to 3. Uh, U does not exist, so U will be 1. And S already exists, so S will be 2. So when you look at it, these two, even if they don't follow the same order, these two are equivalent according to Python. And you can see the same frequency distribution is what we're getting in both of these cases. So now that we know the concept of frequency distributions, I can take the frequency distribution of both of these first two lines together and compare this with the frequency distribution of the third line to see if both of them are equal. If they're equal, I can just go ahead and say, this is the same uh, thing that is written in a different way. And how do we do that? Obviously, we can just go ahead and find out what the frequency distribution of this is here and this is here and we can compare with that. Okay. So in this case, S will have, there are two S's, right? One, two. Then uh, there are one, two, three, three A's. And then, uh, so S is gone, A is also gone. Then we have one N, N will be one. And then T will also be one. And then we have one L. So everything here is gone. We have a U and an L as well. Yes. So L is already included. Sorry. Uh, and C as well. So C will also be one. This is done. So we can go to dead more us now. Uh, D is not there. And there are two D's here. We can go ahead and strike off the D's. Then we have an E. Then we have two O's. I will go like that. And an M followed by an R and then followed by a C. Okay. So now we have uh, made the frequency distribution for these two lines right here. And the, this, will be, this will be a combined frequency distribution. Now I want you guys to pause the video and do the frequency distribution for this particular line right here because, um, okay. So if you're able to do it, you will know that you are getting this exact same thing, maybe in a different order. And I'm telling you the order doesn't matter. All we need to do is if the distribution is the same. 
so you get the same value so if this particular let's call this d1 this distribution and let this be called d2 if d1 is equal to d2 we can go ahead and say that yes we can rearrange the letters to form the first two lines else that will be the case when there's anything extra or anything lower in that particular case we can just go ahead and print no this is how the logic works if you're able to understand this i recommend you to go ahead and code this yourself if not stick around for the code so we have three lines here uh, first will be the first string so let's just go ahead and input the first string and then let's input the second string as well followed by the third string which will be the third line uh, third okay something like this so these two strings will be first and second this will be third string we have also have two frequency distributions as we discussed d1 and d2 and see distributions so that will be d1 let us initialize that to an empty dictionary d2 will also be an empty dictionary now find out histogram for st1 and uh, as i discussed in how to do that we just iterate through the elements of st1 we check if this particular element is already there in d1 just go ahead and increase its value by one else initialize it to one okay that's it so now that we are done with this we have to do the histogram for st2 so this will be the same line over here again but this will be for st2 that will be for i and st2 all of this is the same if i and d1 uh, that case just d1 of i will be increase that particular count by one for that element else d1 of i set that to one okay this is also done for you then what can we do see i can go ahead and print how this looks like uh, to show how this particular thing looks like let me just go ahead and print this d1 and then uh, show you what that looks like let me just run this code you can see this part right here this is what this particular frequency distribution looks like okay so now let's go ahead histogram for st3 there is the exact same thing let me just copy and paste this again except d1 you're going to change all of this to d2 okay and change st2 to st3 and this will also print something similar finally we're just going to check if d1 is equal to equal to d2 in that particular case go ahead and print yes else print no okay i save this and i run you can see all the test cases i have passed i can actually go ahead and print both of these print d1 and then i'll say second and say print d2 also you can see these may have different or actually it's the same order only what python taking uh, is taking there so you can see the order is not kind of same because uh, in this case there's an s it ends with the z here but here z is in the middle use the ending here use somewhere in the middle but it is equating both of these to be similar because it's, it contains the same values only and that's how it gets compared i hope you're able to visualize all of this i'll just go ahead and exit this and then just run the test cases you to see that it passed let me just go ahead and submit the solution as well so that you know that it works again a very simple problem guys i think this concept of a frequency histogram will help you across a lot of problems and this is a very very easy way to check if two particular strings are you know kind of equivalent or anything like that uh, there are a lot of applications for this of course it's not just limited to strings as you can see that this uh, you know code passed i hope this video helped you if it did hit that like button if you have any questions let me know down in the comments i'll try my best to answer them if you guys have any approach alternate approaches for this particular problem let me know that also down in the comments i'll look at it thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video until then bye